Hey guys, it's Leanna and I'm here today with a Dark Academia vlog. Which of the Dark Academia books? Well, I put six on my TBR and then uh, of the three I wanted to maybe tackle this weekend, I asked which people wanted me to read most. So the three were The Maidens, Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children, and The Mary Shelley Club. And I kind of expected The Maidens to win by landslide, and it did. <laughs> However, for a while there, it was like neck and neck with Mary Shelley Club. So. This is my top priority this for this reading vlog, uh, and then my second priority is Mary Shelley Club, and then only then Miss Peregrine's Home. I think maybe possibly I could read all three this weekend. I don't know. I don't know. Um, I did get kind of a late start today because well I went to bed really late last night. I stayed up until like two watching Lucifer, and then this morning I had um, a chat uh, with my patrons about our buddy read, so um, yeah, <laughs> late start. And then yeah tomorrow. I do need to film some regular channel videos, not like my wrap-up. The stack for my wrap-up is right there and it's just gonna sit there until I film it. <laughs> so it's like haunting me. But yeah, and then um, I also really, this is not book or dark academia or anything related, but Starbucks has a holiday drink that is vegan or can be made vegan. That is to say, a lot of the holiday drinks at Starbucks, like even if you get it with like soy milk or coconut milk or whatever, uh, it can't be made vegan because like the, the holiday flavor stuff has dairy in it, but they have a new one this year that's like apple, apple something. And even though I don't really like sweets, I always want to try everything. If there's like a vegan option for something that's like new, I'm like, I must try it. So I have some Starbucks gift cards left over from last holiday season, and there's a Starbucks within walking distance of me, so I might pop over to Starbucks and we'll see how I'm feeling about vlogging in public. I want to get a coffee tomorrow, um, but otherwise my plans are just to read. Read these books, film some videos in addition to filming this vlog and get that apple coffee. So welcome. It is also unpardonably sunny this weekend all week during like work week. It was so gloomy and cool. And of course, now that I'm filming my Dark Academia vlog, it's again, unpardonably sunny. So I've closed my blinds and turned on the AC so that I can wear a sweater and be in darkness just for you. So yeah, I'm excited. I hope you're excited. So I'm about 100 pages into The Maidens, which I feel like is a good time to check in. But the main reason I decided to check in is because the book mentioned in passing The Revengers Tragedy um, by Middleton. Th Thomas Middleton? Is that right? I don't want to tell a lie. Yes, it is Thomas Middleton. I shouldn't have second guessed myself. Um, and uh, I didn't know about this until Heather, my friend, um, who... My friend Heather. Why did I say it the other way around? Oh my god, what's wrong with me? When we were doing our live talking about Macbeth and the Tempest and the Hogarth Shakespeare retellings of those plays, we got to talking just sort of about generally like plays of the time, etc. And um, she mentioned the Revengers tragedy. And then after she praised it and specifically praised an, uh, a movie version of it with Christopher Eccleston, I love Christopher Eccleston. And then I found the movie and I watched it. It has Eddie Izzard in it as well. 
Anyway, um, I've never heard of it before that. I don't think a lot of people have heard of it. It was really, really hard to find the movie and it was, it was most excellent. So I was just excited to see it mentioned in The Maidens. But The Maidens itself, how is it going? It both is and isn't what I expected. It is, it does have an academic setting and there is like sort of this macabre mystery unfolding that is being kind of like slowly but surely pieced together and followed up on by our main character. And you're also getting quick uh, glimpses into the like antagonists. Is it an antagonist? Into the like crime doers perspective. What is kind of strange is the, um, the chapters are really, really short. I'm on part two, chapter four. And part two, part two began on page 91. And I'm on chapter four and I'm on page 103. So that gives you an idea of how short the chapters are, which isn't bad. It depends. Some books like I like there being short chapters because it keeps things popping and other times I'm just like, I feel jolted and like whiplashed a bit. Yeah, it's fine. I don't have a problem with it. It's just kind of like surprising. Um, also because of the secret history, which what did this cover evokes and what Dark Academia, like no conversation about Dark Academia is complete without the secret history. Uh, the secret history had really long chapters exact opposite of this but yeah um so in terms of this not being what i expected it's not really i thought it would be more akin to the secret history i.e focused on students and their lives and like a group of students i mean it's it's more to do with the faculty and like faculty plays a part in the secret history for sure but yeah i i don't know i thought it usually when i've read dark academia it's been sort of a close-knit group of students that is kind of the central focus or the pov or the main plot surrounds is is surrounding them and this isn't really like that it is i mean it is a academic setting because there is yeah the faculty are kind of in question and students are by necessity like faculty interact with students but like the focus is on the faculty rather than the students i mean like the main pov character she's a former student she's not a current student either so yeah that's what i'm finding unexpected and that's what makes it feel slightly less like dark academia because i really feel like dark academia tends to focus on like this hyper obsessive immersion of the student experiencing university life and becoming like obsessive about their field of study and or obsessed with oh my god can we not becoming obsessed again either with their field of study or and or a charismatic professor but then again like the focus is on the student and how the student views that professor rather than like the focus being on the professor. So like thinking Ninth House, Secret History, If We Were Villains, Black Chalk, all of those. I don't necessarily like all those books, but they all focus on students, um, either a group of students or a student. And faculty may or may not be part of that, but they're not. It's about the student. So that's what's surprising to me about this is that it's the faculty or specifically a professor and a former student. But it is intriguing, it is interesting to atmospheric, it is a slow creep, which is my jam. So it is getting somehow sunnier. It is coming through the blinds. I feel like even you can see that there's like sunlight on my face. I have the blinds completely closed. This is unacceptable. <laughs> so yeah, um, I ordered food. <laughs> I just haven't been arsed. It's funny. I was kind of planning to, and I still am planning to, just not as in, not as immediately as I originally planned to start a second YouTube channel um, for vegan food and food related things because I like talking about that, but I also know that a lot of people who watch booktube don't really care about that, which is fine. I totally get that. Um, but because I do sometimes talk about that stuff and people are interested in it when I do, I figured I could just make a second channel or I just talk about that there. But that said, <laughs> Um, for the last month or so, well the last month, August, was insanely busy for me, like, um, every single day of August basically I had something on my calendar. And then I also had like 16 books on my TBR. So August was a lot. <laughs> and so in August I wasn't really cooking very much and I still just cannot be arsed because now September is slightly chiller than August, there's still like way too much on my calendar in all September, but it is not the madness that was August. I thought that I would feel like, oh, I have time now to like do start my second channel and to work on some other projects, but like I'm just burned out. So I have not been cooking 
or grocery shopping like at all. I just cannot be arsed. So <laughs> the last two weeks I've just been eating um, nachos from this Mexican place and then like reheating them because like they it's a huge portion if you get nachos and or nacho fries and I usually get one of each and it's massive and it's not just like it's a lot of food like if you look at it but it's also really rich food because it's like I mean chips are fried and fries are fried and then even though it's it's vegan like the, there's still like a ton of salt and fat and and protein in the fake meat and the beans um so it's just like a lot so i just get two order i get an order of nacho fries and an order of nachos and then i just like slowly work my way through it over the course of like a week so i've just ordered the nachos twice and basically for two weeks i've been living on like oatmeal for breakfast and nachos for lunner <laughs> And I do have a little leftover, some like stew that I made the other night, but I don't, I ran out of rice uh, to put it over because it's kind of an Indian stew. And I don't have any more basmati rice at all, even to cook it if I wanted to. So since I cannot be arsed <laughs> to go to the store to get some, or really to cook anything else, because I have other food that I could cook, I just ordered a bunch of Indian food. Um, I ordered it for delivery later because you can schedule it ahead. So. I'm gonna keep reading The Maidens, and I think by the time I've scheduled my food to arrive, I should be done with The Maidens, and at which point I can move on to reading one of the other two books. So that's the plan, uh, and I'll catch you later. <laughs> This might be a nitpick. I mean, it is a nitpick, I guess, but it's driving me insane. I am this far through, so mo most of the way. And there's this scene where she's having dinner um, with this guy, and they're having leg of lamb with potatoes and greens, I think. But anyway, the point is the lamb. And the lamb is like very, very rare, uh, you know, in terms of like how cooked it is. Not that it's an un <laughs> a unique and unusual lamb. And um, she makes the comment that like, there's blood oozing out of the lamb, which is putting her off. And like, if it had just said this once, like it already irks me because if you don't know, now you know, rare meat is not bloody. When you see like red juices, like in the packaging or red juices when you're eating like a rare steak, it's not blood. People always say that and that is not correct. This is a vegan telling you this, but um, it's abs it is not blood. It just is not. Um, it's this other thing. It starts with an H. What's it called? It's called? Oh no, it does not start with an H. I lied about that. Um, myoglobin is what it's called. It's a protein that makes the juices coming out look red. Um, but it's not blood. It never was, and it isn't, and it's just, just no. So her saying that, like, I mean, I get the imagery of that, that, like, this meat is so bloody and it's putting her off. If it said it once, I'd be like, okay, it's not blood, but whatever. But this, like, whole two pages... It just keeps reiterating that there's blood, and that it tastes like blood, and there's a puddle of blood, and that it's oozing blood. And I'm just like, but it's not though. If it literally, like, it had just said it looks like blood, or it reminds her of blood, or it was like too much putting her in mind of blood, and that's why, like, even though it's not blood, it just drives me nuts. I guess since it's pretty common for people to think that it's blood, I mean, I guess this character would think that it's blood, but a lot of people think that but it's not blood <laughs> anyway uh just just driving me insane that they're talking about this and i thought you should know okay i am really enjoying it though so people keep telling me all over the place in my dms and comments and chats and discords that they can't wait to hear my rant about the maidens and like i don't know if it's because like the ending is gonna really like it's gonna be like lost you know we're like and it's all a dream um which i can't see being the case but like 
if it's the ending that it's what people are ranting about, where they think I'm going to rant about, I mean, I can't judge yet. But if they think I'm going to hate the whole thing, so far, I really like it. So, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see when I get to the end. I did it. I finished The Maidens and I really liked it. Do I think it's perfect? Absolutely not. Do I think that it is kind of surface level in terms of a lot of- well hello baby kitty. Would you like to give us your assessment of The Maidens? I'm gonna stand right there in front of the light. Come here darling. Are you upset that you missed out on dinner? Not time for your dinner yet. Mm -hmm. Back to the maidens. Uh, I is not the best written thing I've ever read in terms of a lot of the things that it incorporates, references, or in fact builds itself upon. I get the sense that the author is just just did some googling. Uh, there's you know obviously from the cover and from. Oh, from the cover and from the premise, you can discern that there's going to be Greek classics elements, which ever since the secret history is <laughs> apparently required for dark academia. But there's a lot of sort of psychoanalysis, psychiatry, therapy, mental illness, in addition to Greek classics and the study thereof. And it does, I mean, I am not an expert in either thing. Uh, Greek classics. I took like a couple classes on that in college and it was my least favorite. I really don't like Greek classics very much. And I've never taken any like psychology course at all. And even to me, it seemed like it was a lay person's surface level approach to a lot of these themes. I, I think it was an, in, an engrossing read, an intriguing read. 
it kept me on the edge of my seat. It kept me turning the page. I had a good time, but it is no secret history. And I feel like if I did know anything about these things, which I don't, and even I found it to be lacking in kind of surface level, and if I did know anything more about Greek tragedies than I do, or about psychology than I do, I think I would be deeply frustrated um, by this book. So. Do I recommend it? I recommend it if you want like a thriller that you can read in one day. Oh, Kaz! Baby Kitty just knocked over the camera. So no more letting you sit where you want to sit. No more. Okay. So yeah, I recommend the book if you just kind of want to have a good time um, and read a thriller in one day. Wouldn't you say? Thriller in one day? But uh, it's not like a favorite of the year. It's not terribly deep. Um, and I feel like it's a book that if I spend more time thinking about it, I'll be annoyed with it because <laughs> of its handling of things. I think it's, it's well written in terms of being engrossing, page turning, in terms of setting a scene, setting a mood, um, you know, giving you clues that kind of make you go, oh, oh no, oh no. So it was atmospheric. I also don't think that it would, I don't think it would be a fun one to reread. Yeah, I think it's sort of the gimmick. Like the question of what's going on and what's the answer to this mystery is what keeps you turning the page, but it's not the kind of book that like now that you know the answer that you're like dying to go back to the beginning to find out if you can like catch these clues or see it from the beginning. Now that I know the answer, I'm like, oh, okay. Cool. <laughs> um, so it's not a book that I see myself ever rereading. Whereas The Secret History by Donna Tartt. I'll absolutely reread. So I don't know what, I feel like my initial reaction was that I would give this four stars, but I think it's more of a 3.5, um, which I guess I should round up. I usually round up, but I think I'll round down to three. Because it's not deserving of a four, but I had a good time with it. I don't regret reading it at all. It's one of the most like page turny books that I've read in a long time. <laughs> but so for this evening, I, what am I going to do? I'm going to, it's uh, 8 o'clock. I'm a little woozy from wine because I haven't really been drinking at all for quite some time now. And it wasn't like a conscious um, abs abstention, is that a word? I'm too woozy from wine. I think abstention is a word, but I have not been consciously abstaining. I just haven't had anything to drink at all the time. I just wasn't feeling it. So I also don't drink wine really ever. I literally only drank wine because it felt like a dark academia type of thing to have and I thought it would go well with Indian food, which it did. I really like Indian food or like Italian food or things like that. Like saucy, rich, spiced foods with red wine. I don't know if you're supposed to pair those things, but I think it works pretty well. I'm like my mother in that. But wine is definitely not my drink. But I liked this. So if you also don't really like wine very much, <laughs> um, I buy this brand so that I have wine and uh, on hand for when my mom comes over because she pretty much exclusively drinks wine. Um, and I have this brand on hand because it is vegan. Not all wines are vegan, more to the wise. Um, but she likes this brand a lot and it's vegan. So that's what I have on hand for her. She trans she prefers to drink Cab Sauv. I just got like a, diff a few different reds. Um, so this was the Zinfandel, because I know, I figured since she likes cab, I'd leave the cab that I have for her and do the Zin for myself tonight. And I quite like this. So, Rabble Zinfandel. If you don't like wine, <laughs> then I recommend this wine. Kaz! Hmm? Got shy all of a sudden? Hmm? Got some wisdom to share? Back to my plans for the evening. Um, I guess I'll start the Mary Shelley Club. Since that was the plan. And honestly, after reading something kind of dark, like The Mavens, I think I'm vibing something dark, like 
I'm wearing a chalet club because it's, it's dark out and I have wine. It doesn't seem like the time to be starting a children's book. I mean, I know Miss Peregrine's is, is YA. It's not middle grade, but nevertheless. Kaz! So yeah, um, I don't know how I don't know how far I'll get on Mary Shelley Club. Kaz! She's been napping this whole time. Now that I turn the camera on. Kaz! Go play with something quieter. Um, yeah. So. I don't know how far I'll get in Mary Shelley Club because it's 8 o'clock and I've had wine. But I want you to know how I go with that. One down, two to go. So I'll book a day, right? I can do that. So uh, I've read through to the, uh, the end of chapter 15. I am this far through the Mary Shelley Club. And so far, it's fine. <laughs> I think it's about to get um scary or not scary i don't i don't know that this book is gonna uh, is the point of it is to be scary or be disturbing i don't know maybe it will be but whatever it's gonna be i think it's about to be that thing um right where i'm stopping <laughs> so far it's just it just feels kind of very juvenile and not not terrible but i just i find difficulty relating to it which i don't know i don't have that problem when i read like the truly devious books which are also honestly quite juvenile but I just I guess I find an easier time relating um, or they just there's also the fact that a lot of the dialogue in this is the kind that is um, dating itself in a way that like is current and modern now but in a couple of years people will be like oh that's so old <laughs> and I feel like it's always a bad idea for Kaz You've been so quiet. Must we play with our fish taco right now? The references to like TikTok and to horror movies that have come out like very, very recently. I just feel like, I don't know, anytime books mention stuff that like so clearly dates them, like pop culture and um, music and things like that. I just always think it's a bad idea and it always kind of takes me out of the story because then I'm thinking about like the fact that they're mentioning this thing rather than the story yeah like if it I don't know if they kept it to I, I guess they, I appreciate why naming specific horror movies becomes a necessity because this club is kind of all about horror lovers talking about their love of horror so much like book lovers talking about books like books specific books will come up but if there if there is I feel like it's possible to write this and keep it vague or to make up names of movies, which is also a thing that books like this do, where they just invent. Like in this universe, those are horror movies. There's just like a lot of name dropping of specific and known horror movies. That's just, I just, I just don't like that. <laughs> um, I'm trying to make it sound like it's objectively bad, but I just don't like that. I'm also just not that interested. But I th again, I think it's about to get really dark. Because basically, hey Cass, can we not knock over the camera? No, let's not do that. So yeah, the Mary Shelley Club is a club in this elite school that kind of has taken their cue, their inspiration from Mary Shelley and um, the sort of the evening of the origin of Frankenstein when she and Lord Byron and, and Percy Shelley, I think it was the three of them, um, it was raining and they couldn't go out and they like challenged each other to tell the scariest ghost story and, and Mary Shelley won. <laughs> I just, I mean, that's the concept for the club and they, but what the club does is play pranks on people that are like inspired by a horror, the horror genre and the idea is to see if like horror like you see in film can be enacted in real life. If it's like the trick of the camera that makes it horrific, if it's like the soundtrack and the way it's shot and the lighting that makes it horrific, or if recreating these things in real life can inspire real fear. And I just, it's, 
I feel like the author wanted to name this the Mary Shelley Club, but then wanted to tell a story about evil pranks. And just like the explanation for how those two things are supposed to be connected is just so thin. I'm like, you can tell a story about kids pulling pranks. And with that's their whole project is seeing if you play out horror stuff IRL, if it is scary. I just don't. And then you could separately also write a book about a club that is has taken on like the inspiration and challenge uh, from the example set by Mary Shelley and telling a scary story. I just don't see how these things are connected. If they were trying to scare each other, because that's what Lord Byron, Percy Shelley, and Mary Shelley were doing. We're trying to scare each other. Uh-uh, Kaz. We're trying to scare each other that night. And she won. So if this was a story about this like insular group trying to scare each other, and then it like it escalates from stories to pranks on each other, that would make a little more sense in terms of why you're calling this the Mary Shelley Club. Um, so it just kind of irks me that the name kind of feels like it doesn't make any sense. It's just what the author wanted to call it. But in any case, I don't hate it. I'm not loving it. I don't hate it. We'll see. I am interested to see, I guess, how dark it gets. Because I'm given to believe it gets pretty dark. But it is quite late and I'm quite tired because I went to bed really late last night and I've had wine. Actually, I actually haven't had very much wine, but having any at all, it's just like straight to my head. Mm. So yeah, that's my update for you. Then I will see you tomorrow for more dark academia things and stuff. Oh, and apple coffee tomorrow. Oh yeah, wake up early and walk over there. I'm excited for that. So. Good night. Good morning. Happy Sunday. It is really not morning at all. It is coming up on 11 o'clock. I woke up about an hour ago because I couldn't sleep last night because of the vicious cycle, you know, going to bed late, waking up late, going to bed late, waking up late. So I just couldn't sleep. Uh, so I just watched Lucifer again. Also, the little was keeping me up. <laughs> She also woke me up this morning, so she serves both purposes. Yeah, so while I tidied up dishes and whatnot this morning, I listened to some more of the Mary Shelley Club. So at this point, I am now um, a little over halfway. I'm in chapter 28, and it's really boring. <laughs> like, I expected this to be something that I found unpleasant or... Like, I, I mean, best case scenario, I love it. But worst case scenario, I thought my problem with it would be that it was, like, too gross or too gnarly or too whatever. But it's just boring. <laughs> like, I think it's trying so hard to, like, put in all these references to horror movies, all these homages, that it's not even bothered to really de develop these characters. Because it's just, like, a litany of references. And I feel nothing. <laughs> All I feel is like I'm at trivia night, or like, oh, I've heard of that, I haven't seen that, I haven't seen that, but I know what you're talking about, oh, I've definitely heard of that. Oh yeah, I think I know what that is, um, as opposed to being in a story. I feel no suspense, no tension. They've pulled a few pranks now at this point, and like, yeah, they're mean, but I don't know. <laughs> like, I mean, yeah, like IRL, if I heard about kids doing that, I'd be like, oh, that's fucked up. But yeah, it's definitely not delivering on any vibes whatsoever <laughs> um but it is a quick read like if you look like there's not a lot of words per page um so i'll definitely be done with this today and then i can move on to my third and final book miss peregrine's home this is super short too so like realistically i could totally finish both of these today in which case i mean tomorrow i decided this is my my informing you that tomorrow is when i'm gonna film regular channel videos Cause I'm just like half the day is already gone and I still feel kind of like tired um, and I just didn't even finish these books and then tomorrow I won't have to worry about finishing books and just film videos and which won't take all day but um, yeah when I'm done filming before I film and when I'm done filming I might jump into what's my other dark academia <laughs> oh the ivies maybe because I'm supposed to read Nevermore with Bish um, later this month, so I don't want to start that yet. Um, alternatively, this is not Dark Academia, but I was buddy reading uh, The Inheritance of uh, Orchidea 
Orchidea? I say it wrong every time, I'm sure. Orchidea? Orchidea? Is that right? Of, uh, Inheritance of Orchidea, Orchidea Divina um, by Zoretta Cordova. Uh, and I haven't gotten very far at all, but I'm buddy reading it with um, Angela from the Literature Science Alliance. And she's way ahead of me. Like, she said she's going to switch to something else so I can catch up. But um, I think if I finish, yeah, that's what I'll do. If I finish um, these two books today, then tomorrow I can catch up on this, which isn't Dark Academia, but whatever. You can, <coughs> you can deal with it. Kaz, what horrible thing are you doing? She's gotten big enough and strong enough to jump onto the kitchen counter now, which has been delightful for me. <laughs> We're training her that that's not okay, but she doesn't care. Love that. Any hoodies? Um, yeah, I still want to get that apple coffee. So I'm dressed, and oh, this is my... I don't really have a Dark Academia wardrobe, because I don't really wear the kind of stuff that we associate with Dark Academia. I'm a sweatshirt and sweatpants kind of gal. Um, so the, like, tweed and cardigans and linens that they wear in all of the mood boards. I love it. But I just don't have stuff like that, because where would I wear it? I don't go anywhere, and even if I did, I probably wouldn't wear it out. So, um, this is my Frankenstein t-shirt, which I feel like it's a t-shirt, but it's Frankenstein. So, it, it kind of works, right? kind of works. Um, that's the plan. So yeah, now, uh, it's 11. I haven't had breakfast or tea or coffee or anything, so I'm gonna walk over to Starbucks. And I'll maybe kind of sort of take you with me. really hot outside so excuse me while I oh Kaz stop it please don't knock it over no it's not for you <clears throat> so yes um coffee is acquired I have not tasted it yet I figured I'd do that on camera uh, it is also blazing hot outside but I got hot coffee because if you can't drink hot coffee on a hot day you are weak and will not survive the apocalypse so let's try this bad boy that I walked in the hot sun to get uh-uh Kaz not for you uh-uh, that's also not for you. Kaz, why are you the worst? Get off, get off. Uh-uh. Okay, here is the coffee. Uh-uh. It's not for you, baby kitty. It's not for you. Uh-uh. It's not for you. as being just the absolute worst. <laughs> okay, let's try this. It should be cool enough to drink at this point, right? I like it. I really like it. It's not too terribly sweet. And I didn't ask, I just wanted to like the real experience, however they mean you to have it. So oftentimes I'll ask for like, really light sweetener if I go to Starbucks and get like a fancy drink. This is fine the way it is. I really like this. I recommend, but it's it's pretty mild. It kind of tastes like, I don't know. It tastes like apple cinnamon, which is fine. Yeah, 
I might go back because I have more Starbucks gift cards. <laughs> As you very possibly can hear, people are having a pool party outside of my window today, which is just such perfect timing. The last few weeks, no one has been out there in the pool. I thought finally people were like over it, slash summer is coming to an end. The weekend that I decided to film a Drunk Academia reading vlog is the weekend that there's a pool party and it's unpardonably sunny and hot. So I finished the Mary Shelley Club. What time is it? It is 5.30. I want to order pizza for dinner. Let me place that order <laughs> so that it's on, so it's like on its way while I talk. Okay, pizza's on its way. Very excited about that. I was thinking about it the whole time that I was reading and I was like, I'm gonna order pizza. Anyway, um, Mary Shelley Club. I ended up actually quite liking it. Also, I haven't updated Goodreads yet. Um, well, I'll put that in a second. Um, this is officially, by the way, the hundredth book that I've read this year. I have officially, as of this moment, or as of like five minutes ago, uh, completed my Goodreads reading goal for the year. So, woo! <laughs> um, which is why I was like, oh, I gotta update Goodreads, but I can wait. I ended up actually quite liking this. It still had, like the, I still don't love all of the actual references to movies, but just in addition to dating it, just, I just, I don't know, it takes me out of the story. That's just a me thing, I guess. Um, I'm also surprised by, uh, and this has nothing to do with the book fight, how many of the movies mentioned are movies that I've seen. So I don't watch horror movies, I don't like horror movies, but there's quite a few that they named, um, the two that come to mind, and there was more than two for sure, but the two that they named that I was like, oh, I've seen that, uh, were Ready or Not, which, spoilers, um, when Blaze and Bodice Rippers is gonna do our Halloween, um, live show in the evening for our for our October read and we're gonna dress up again like we did last year. Last year we did vampires because we read a vampire book. This year we're reading The Last Final Girl so we're all dressing as final girls so I already told uh, the ladies that I would be dressing as Grace Ladomas from Ready or Not. <laughs> uh, so 
stay tuned for that. But um, yeah, so Ready or Not and Funny Games, um, I've seen that too. Those were two that they definitely mentioned. They mentioned Funny Games a lot. And there was a few others too that I was like, I've seen that, I've seen that too. Which is like, I wasn't expecting because I don't watch horror movies. <laughs> anyway, uh, it turned out to be uh, much more thrilling than it seemed at first. And it started to get interesting and good when we started to get kind of the, so the, the fear tests, the, the pranks, which they call fear tests. Um, like last time I think I talked to you, they had done one, but we had seen it from the perspective of the club, of like the main character in the club, the Marriage Shelley Club. Um, but then after that, we started seeing them from the perspective of the person being um, fear pranked, fear, fear tested, um, the victim, which just made it more exciting. Um, and then there began to unfold a larger mystery. So like the main character takes on kind of like a detective role, um, but it has the vibe of like Riverdale when Betty and Jughead are like on the case, even though they're like high school students. Um, and I love Riverdale. Um, this isn't as good as Riverdale because part of what makes Riverdale great are the characters their quirks and their humor and their personalities. And I, I maintain that the characters in the Mary Shelley Club are very lacking in personality. Um, it's just that the plot actually ended up being more intriguing as it went on. The characters are whatever. Um, but just like them, the investigatory in high school because weird shit is going on thing was kind of Riverdale to me. Um, and I love Riverdale. So anything that reminds me of Riverdale is instantly gonna be higher in my esteem um and yeah and by the end it, they were like <laughs> you know it's been this kind of slow build like eh, it's not really scary and okay well i guess that was fucked up but it's still not really scary oh this is getting a little more exciting okay and then oh okay there's oh that's quite mysterious and uh oh and oh my goodness and oh no <laughs> and like it was like slow and then like faster and faster and faster so by the end the like reveals and twists were just like bam 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 where i was just like oh no oh what oh no <laughs> so i had a good time in the end i had a good time i think i'm gonna give it four stars it's like i gave the maidens i gave three and a half and i kind of want to give this three and a half as well but the maidens when i scored it on good reads i rounded it down to three and this one i intend to round up to four um so yeah take from that what you will it's a higher 3.5 than the other one but yeah i i actually had had a good time so I do recommend also quickly about the maidens um because there were some like ranty reviews that I had seen the thumbnail like they popped up on my youtube feed um for the maidens and I'd been like oh but I plan to read that so I can't watch that so I looked up a few last night um and then I was also like talking to some people that have read the book and I think the main reason that it worked for me and it what it is that doesn't work for other people um and it's totally valid if like the, the reading of it that other people gave, that's, is valid. Um, but so a lot of it to, was to do with the stupidity and incompetence of the main character and that's what, what people hated. And I am the kind of person that would normally be upset by something like that. However, and again, this might just be me projecting onto the book something that is like, I'm just being weirdly forgiving. But when I was reading it, I felt like, I mean, I agreed that the main character was not very good at what she was doing and making really poor decisions and being really dumb. Um, I don't disagree with that, but I don't feel like we were meant to think she was smart. Like I con I kept getting the feeling that the book was dissecting her as much as it was dissecting anyone else around her. So yeah, she was our POV character. Yeah, it was through her eyes that we were seeing this mystery unfold and it was her sleuthing that we were following. But the kind of comments made by people in her life to her that she would be like oh well screw them like i just i kept taking those as like indications from the author that we should not trust our pov character that she is an unreliable narrator and not unreliable insofar as she is lying to us not that kind of unreliable narrator but just like she's a faulty witness that like people keep telling her that she's projecting her emotions onto things and that she might not be seeing really what the truth is and she might be having like she might have blocks on things and that like she sh maybe should examine herself and there were like a few times when characters were saying that to her and um again i just took that all these like indications from the author as like 
telling me that, yeah, she's not supposed to be like the sleuth that you're on the same page with. That, I mean, she gave me as much as anxiety as everybody else did because I was like, oh, but like, I, I mean, I don't, I, you might be wrong too because like, I'm, t I'm seeing this through your eyes, but your eyes are not trustworthy. <laughs> um, so that added to my enjoyment because that's how I was reading it. Um, and if you didn't read it that way, I can see why you would feel very frustrated and angry with the book and feel like it was dumb. So even though I ended up having quite a few problems with it myself, like that weren't to do with that. It weren't, they weren't to do with the main character being dumb because that wasn't a problem I had. I thought other things about the plot didn't make a lot of sense. And like the end reveal, I was like, oh, I didn't see that coming. But like, um, I don't know if that really makes sense. So those would have been, and then like the, kind of surface level treatment of psychology and Greek tragedy was kind of like, eh, like that was not the best. Um, I didn't really have a problem with the main character because I felt like her flaws were intentional um, is how I read it. So any hoosies, that's my take on the Maidens and the Mary Shelley Club. So on to Miss Peregrine's Home, uh, which I will eat with my pizza. No, I will read it with my pizza. <laughs> <laughs> it's not like I'm gonna read the pizza and eat the book. So a slight change of plans. Um, my pizza has arrived, so that is still happening. But um, my brother just texted me, and um, I guess hang on, let me get my pizza. I'll show you the pizzas real quick. Okay, so here's the tiny one that should have been a calzone, and it's just not. And it's not for you, baby kitty. It's for me. And the big pizza that was always supposed to be big. It's not for you, baby kitty. It's for me. Oh boy. You can have the sticker. You want the sticker? I know you like stickers. Hmm? You want that? Yeah, you can fuck with that while I open the pizza. And this, which looks, I think, fine. <laughs> um, yeah. Okay. Okay, back to the change of plans that I was trying to communicate. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna take that away from you now, Kaz, because uh, it's making too much noise. Yeah, my brother texted me that Suicide Squad is leaving HBO as of today. Um, so he's like, come over. And I was like, I'm vlogging and I just ordered pizza. And he was like, bring the pizza? It's <laughs> like, okay. <laughs> so I will, I, I mean, maybe I'll read some when I come home tonight. Um, but I'm heading to my parents' house um, where the four of us will be watching. The new Suicide Squad while I eat this pizza that will be cold by the time that I get there. No! Okay, so, uh, yeah, I'll catch you later. So yeah, I thought, um, we could chat in the car since I'm bailing on you tonight. Um, and I have an iPhone now. Well, I've had an iPhone for a while, but last time I tried vlogging in the car, was putting my camera up on a mount in the car, which worked terribly. Um, but the iPhone camera is pretty, pretty red, so we're gonna see how this goes. And if this goes terribly, you'll never see this footage because <laughs> I'll never make it into the vlog. So yeah, uh, Mary Shelley Club. I don't know. Did I? I feel like I said everything I had to say. <laughs> Just kidding. I don't have anything to say to you anymore. <laughs> and I explained my position on the maidens. But yeah. So like, I don't know. I felt I was actually yeah. I was talking to people about the maidens. Um, and um. Well, I made it sound like I only talked to people that didn't like it. I talked to somebody who felt exactly the same way that I did. Um, and, like, we both were like, how do you rate a book that, like, you absolutely had a good time reading, but you know, like, you know that it's not good. <laughs> and it's not a situation, because, like, I normally quote Patrick Rothfuss and say, um, you know, to love something because is easy, but to love something despite, to know the flaws and love them too, that's rare and pure and perfect. And I... Uh, this is not one of those cases. This isn't a situation where I'm like, this is a perfect book despite its flaws because it's per No, it's like definitely not. Like, I know its flaws. Um, they bothered me. <laughs> uh, they just weren't the same flaws that I've heard other people identify, which again, I already explained. But it is a deeply flawed book. Like, I'm, I didn't come away from that thinking like, oh yeah, I could see why people don't like that, but I thought it was great. No, like, while I was like, oh, I don't like, I don't like that. <laughs> that didn't make any sense, but... Yeah, I mean, like, when I was reading it, I was chewing through it. I 
read it so quickly and I was so engrossed in it and I had a good time. It's not at all like this, which I feel like is my new favorite thing where I say it's like this. Well, it's nothing like this, but it's like this. Um, it's like watching Pacific Rim or the Warcraft movie, um, both of which I enjoyed tremendously. Um, neither, neither of which is a good movie. But did I enjoy my time? Yes, I did. It's not a good book. But I think it's well written. And I think those are two distinctly different things. Because, like, I think he's good at pacing it. I think he's good at setting the scene and writing in a way that kind of gets you, like, creeped out and makes you want to turn the page. Um, so it's the writing is good. But the plot and a lot of the things in the plot <laughs> um, are not good. So, like, the cliff notes of it, you'd be like, oh, yikes. <laughs> but the actual experience of reading it was tremendously enjoyable. So that's why 3.5 stars, because I think like it deserves points for the writing itself. Because you could write, this is like the opposite <laughs> of Dune. Dune also got three stars from me for the opposite problem. Dune, I think, is an incredible book in terms of like what it's attempting to accomplish, the world that it is building or has built, the philosophical questions it seeks to pose. Um, all of those things are fantastic. I just feel like as a reading experience, it is not well paced. It is not well like told in a way that is it's not compellingly written. It doesn't keep you turning the page. It doesn't make you want to read on. Um, and that's why I got three stars. So the opposite reason for the maidens. The maidens substantively is entirely lacking, but the experience of reading it is well constructed. Um, so yeah, <laughs> Dune and the maidens. Didn't think I'd be talking about those two side by side, but here we are. That's my take. <laughs> On Dude and the Maidens. Whereas, so Mary Shelley Club, I did. I don't necessarily think it's a good book or like a like a much 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 better book than the Maidens, but I think it's a better balance of like a decent story, decently well plotted by the end, certainly a page turner, and yeah, it was just. I think the writing is better in the Maidens, but so much else about it was ugh, that I had to dock it stars. Whereas Mary Shelley Club was kind of like evenly not as good, if that makes sense. Like the writing wasn't that good. The plot isn't that good. The reveals, the characters aren't that good. But none of them individually are like atrocious. Whereas The Maidens is like highest highs, meaning the pacing and the writing, and lowest lows in terms of the plot not making a whole lot of sense. <laughs> so whereas like the, the conclusion of Mary Shelley Club, the like the answer to the mystery, uh, the answer to the who done it, who who was it doing the doing, um, was more satisfying. It didn't make me go what. <laughs> it made me go oh, okay, yeah, all right, that that yeah, I think that checks out. Um, yeah, versus the maiden where I was like, well, I didn't see that coming because then bananas. <laughs> so. Uh, I'm very much looking forward to Miss Peregrine's home. I think I'm gonna like it. But I've again talked to people who were like, oh, I hated it. And then someone else was like, oh, I actually liked the movie only and I hate the book. <laughs> oh no. Because <laughs> in classic me fashion, I already ordered books two and three. Uh, that's mainly because it looked to me like hardcovers were getting harder to come by and they had good price drops on all three of them. So I ordered them. And now I have them. And they all, like the aesthetic of them all, is so 100,000% my jam that I kind of don't want to read Miss Peregrine's Home because what if I hate it? Then I have to get rid of these books that just look like they're absolutely my jam. Uh oh, bump in the road coming. Boom. Uh, yeah, so if I read it and I hate it, then I can't keep them and I can't like how they look. Um, and I mean, Ransom Riggs, the author, is, I believe, married to Thahida Mafi. And Thahida Mafi is also an author that a lot of people hate. Um, and I really like Shatter Me, which I know. This is why people don't feel like they know my taste or don't feel like they can accurately or reliably predict my taste. And I mean, I'm right there with you. I don't know what I'm looking for. Either. But, um, not that, uh, not that husbands and wives are the same. But I just feel like Tedemafe is an author 
that a lot of people are like, oh no, and I'm like, I like it. Uh, and she's married around the rings. But then apparently people are about Miss Peregrine's are like, oh no. And I'm like, I hope I'll be like, well, I like it. Um, so here's, here's hoping. I also didn't love the movie. So maybe that's a good sign. If people loved the movie and hated the book, maybe, again, maybe that means that they have the opposite taste of me and I will love the book. Or I'll just not really like either is also an option. Oh, no, you don't. Um, yeah. But so tonight, as I mentioned, we're watching Suicide Squad, the new Suicide Squad, which, <laughs> oh yeah, uh, I should probably mention I didn't hate the original Suicide Squad. And I also didn't hate Jared Leto as the Joker. So go ahead, cancel me now. I have, I think that's like one of my most unpopular opinions, but because my channel is related to books, not movies, it hasn't come up. But yeah, Jared Leto as the Joker was A-OK -okay by me. I don't see the problem. I mean, I heard he was a dick on set, which is like a whole different problem. Um, I think, yeah, I mean, I definitely like when I heard the speculation about how it was like changed in the edit and how it's more than likely that the Joker was intended to have a bigger part in the movie and how a lot of things that Harley Quinn does, um, especially in the latter half of the movie, really don't make sense for the plot that supposedly we have in the new Suicide Squad. Like, it just doesn't make sense anymore that she would be doing, oh, hello there. Um, the, like the way she reacts to things and the way that they are reacting to her really only makes sense if the like if the Joker was supposed to do things that he just does, that never actually does because they cut that out. Um, so I would like to have seen what it was the original intention for the plot of Suicide Squad and what how the Joker would be part of that. Um, well, I guess we'll unless we get like like we got with the Snyder Cut. Um, unless we get something like that, we'll just never know. Um, but yeah, all that to say, I've heard more positive things about the new Suicide Squad, uh, and I, I liked the first one, so I'm, it's not a high bar to clear, I guess. I was quite satisfied with, let's just, I mean, like, I think, it, well, okay, Suicide Squad, the original Suicide Squad, is uh, kind of up there with Pacific Rim and the Maidens and, I don't know, stuff like that, where I'm like, I don't disagree with any of your assessments about its flaws. Except I do disagree about the Joker. I think Jared Leto's just fine as the Joker. I think it was a unique, fresh take on the Joker. And people act like it's not, like it's insane for him to be covered in tattoos and have a grill and look like a gangster. I'm like, wow, that's a new version of the Joker. We haven't seen him before. What's wrong with that? It looks crazy to me. And I thought he and, he and Harley, or he and Margot Robbie had good chemistry. Um, but yeah, otherwise, I mean, I do think Suicide Squad, the first movie, isn't a good movie. But I had fun when I went to go see it. I had a good time. I, I mean, then people complain about the soundtrack being like non-stop. Um, what is it called? When you use licensed music, uh, non-stop licensed music. But I'll, I'm just gonna give you all my unpopular opinions right here, right now. I like jukebox musicals and I like licensed music when it's used in TV shows and movies. Like when people complain about, um, in particular CW shows when they use licensed music and the lyrics for the licensed music is like in painfully on the nose for what's going on in the scene. I don't, don't have a problem with that. I quite like it in fact. Um, and so yeah, I didn't mind. To, I guess I, maybe that's what it was. I liked all the licensed music, like the music that they chose for Suicide Squad um, happened to for the most part be music that I am a fan of, just generally as music. Um, and so the movie was kind of just like a massive, long, feature-length music video. And I like music videos. I love watching music videos. So, yeah. It was like a crazy, bonkers, bananas, action-packed music video. Um, with Will Smith. And I'll watch anything with Will Smith in it. So, I was very excited about <laughs> Suicide Squad. And I'm sure they're going to use licensed there's just no way they're not going to. So, I'm here for it. I'm excited about it. But when I give you my assessment of it, after I see it, you, based on what I've just told you in the car, you cannot trust my assessment of it. If I say it's good, take that. Oh, that would be the bumpiest part of the road. Take that.
take that with a grain of salt if I say that I like it because I like shitty things. <laughs> Apparently. Um, so yeah. I really, really don't think I have anything else to say anymore. I think that does it. So, yeah. Excited to eat pizza, watch Suicide Squad, and then come home and start a book that I'm really hoping that I don't hate. Because it makes me very sad. Um, yeah. So, <laughs> talk to you later. Come here, darling. We are. Did you miss me? <laughs> Did you miss me? Right. Ow! Mm -mm -mm. That's not toys for kitties. Hi. Go up here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Nope, that's not toys for kitties. Okay, well, as you can see, I am back. Um, that movie was terrible. I... <laughs> none of us liked it. Um, my brother thinks it's slightly better than the first one. I think it's worse. And, and then we Googled it, and it has a 91% on Rotten Tomatoes, and I just, I don't know anything anymore movie was horrible <laughs> and the reason I think it's worse I do think I mean it has a more the, the plot makes more sense I guess a bit a bit um than the first one but it was just so boring it was such a slog it wasn't funny it wasn't like wild it wasn't it wasn't anything and the more serious parts, they weren't serious enough. Because, I mean, like, I wasn't invested in these characters at all. I didn't care about them. So we had these serious moments, and I was just like, am I supposed to care about this right now? And the action parts just weren't that cool or interesting. And there was even more licensed music. Stop it! There was even more licensed music in this one. Or at, le at very least the same amount. But I think more than in the first one. Um, it was insane. And there were so many times that I didn't understand the choice of song. Like, in particular, there was a part where they used the Kansas song. Um, oh, I don't remember what it's called. Point of No Return, I think. And it just, like, had nothing to do with the scene. It didn't sound like it matched the scene. The word lyrics didn't match the scene. I was like, I really like this song. I just don't know what it's doing here right now. So while it's, it's m marginally, kind of, sort of, maybe, a better plot. It just was no fun. And like slight spoiler, so it's like this big alien monster basically. Um that's the big bad. And like when Idris elbow was facing off against it, it was just so boring. And all I could think to myself was, you know what the first Suicide Squad had that this movie seriously needs is Will Smith. Because if you have a giant alien monster attacking a city and you're gonna have a dude like break out this wild looking gun to fight it, that guy needs to be Will Smith. I love Idris Elba, but he was just so boring. Oh, I'll watch anything with Will Smith in it. I mean, that's probably the main reason I like the first one, but because that has Will Smith in it. Girl, do not be, do not be doing that with my books. So yeah, that's my hot take. Suicide Squad, The Suicide Squad, garbage. I, I don't know how it has a 91% on Rotten Tomatoes. I truly, truly do not know. It's a big old waste of my time. I wish I had been at home reading, but uh, now I know. There's only one way to find out that movie's terrible is by watching it, so it was gonna happen sooner or later. So yeah, um, it is quite late, but I'm not very sleepy because I went to bed late and I woke up late. So I might read a bit tonight, and I'll let you know if I do. Otherwise, I'll catch you later. Good afternoon. <laughs> um, I woke up late and then started planning all my videos and was gonna start filming and it took a while to do that. 
and then I started filming and I got through one and a half videos before my camera ran out of battery and I thought my other battery was charging but it was actually on like it was like had jostled so like the charge thingy wasn't fully in the whatever it's called <laughs> anyway so it actually wasn't charging so now I have two dead batteries and I'm waiting for them to charge so I can't like break this down because I still have like four videos to film um and it is 115. <laughs> and also also I was finally going to film the first video for my second channel which was going to be um it's like the did I mention it in this vlog that I want to start a channel for like vegan food and stuff because I know people don't necessarily care about that on this channel but I like talking about it so I was like no I'll just start a second channel. So I was planning to film a taste test of various seasonal fall vegan creamers because um, there's a lot actually like a lot of brands are now doing it um, making pumpkin spice and other things so I placed a couple orders from stores near me that had these creamers and those were all delivered and the stores were out of several of them so I can't really film my taste test of creamers today either I just have a bunch of creamer in my fridge right now but not enough creamer to do this taste test so I hope I can get my hands on those other creamers. But yeah, so I had a piece of pizza for breakfast. Um, I'm not really hungry. I just want this to be over <laughs> so I can relax and read Miss Peregrine's Home. But so I am going to read Miss Peregrine's Home now while I wait for my battery to charge. Um, and I did order some coffees as well, not just creamers. So even though it's 1 o'clock or 1.15, I'm going to have a cup of coffee with caffeine and read a bit but while this is also still set up I wait and then film some more videos it's just not going according to plan just so much noise outside today I was originally hoping I could wake up early, film a bunch of videos, um, and then do vlogging for the rest of the day, and then have time in the evening to edit a couple of videos. But I got a late start. Things are not going according to plan. <laughs> um, so I doubt I'll be editing any videos tonight because I don't even know if I'll have time to film them all and do a bit of reading. So anyway, coffee and a bit of Miss Peregrine's is what we're doing. Because that's not the order of events that I wanted, but we just got to make it work. So. Off we go. filming videos finally um I didn't film everything that I wanted to film but I'm, I'm tired it is most of my day is gone which is deeply upsetting also I realized um because I was filming uh vlog clips in between you know when my camera died and so I was like okay I'll read Miss Peregrine's while I wait for my battery to charge so I filmed some vlog clips so this camera is in frame in everything that I've now filmed after that because um, I forgot 
um, to move it. So like I put my, I put this camera on this bookshelf. So it's just like sitting right here behind me in all the videos that I filmed after my camera, after my battery was charged. So love that. Um, I just like put the footage on my computer to make sure that I was in focus, which is like an eternal struggle for me is to be in focus. And I am in focus. And there's a camera on the bookshelf behind me. Luckily, it's like a dark camera that is sitting in front of some dark books. So if you're paying attention to me and not your eyes aren't wandering to the shelves behind me, then you may not notice. But then again, I'm also telling you about it right now. So you're going to be on the lookout for it now. Oh boy. Um, but whatever. Not refilming it for that. No freaking way. So, yeah. I am... I need to put away all of these books that I just filmed videos with. And my camera, my ring light. I need to go release Baby Kitty from solitary confinement. I have a bunch of clothes on my bed from all of my costume changes. But uh, I don't have to do that immediately. Just chill here for a second. I'm so tired. Also the lighting changed. The lighting was honestly perfect this morning when I started filming. And since I had to stop filming in the middle of my Frankenstein video, the first half has like the darker lighting and the second half is, you know, afternoon lighting. So it's very obvious that time passed. Ooh, that is what it is. It is what it is. I'll, I'll get the energy in a second to clear all this up and then, then get baby kitty and then read his paragraphs, right? Right? Because this is a reading book. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. Let's do the thing. Huzzah.
Okie doke. So I think we are reaching the end of this vlog. So I read um, a little over 100 pages of Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children and I'm enjoying it. Um, I believe having seen the movie, but I saw when it came out, which like at this point is eons ago. Um, but I think he's about to stumble upon the school. <laughs> But so far the writing style is kind of that, that kind of quirky writing style that you either like or you don't, which I'm very pleased to find because I think that's an appropriate writing style for this type of story. The secret hidden school for peculiar children and then all these black and white photographs of the peculiar children. Um, I'm really enjoying it. It's not really grabbed me. Uh, I'm not like hooked and must continue, but I am enjoying it. Like, I'm just, it's sort of like pleasantly going along, going, hmm, I like this. So I'm hoping that I get more hooked as it goes on. But I mean, we're still, we haven't even get, gotten to the school yet. We haven't met Miss Peregrine yet, so. Um, and I'm really excited to picture Ava Green, because she was the one that played Miss Peregrine. That's like 90% of the reason I went to see the movie in the first place, so. Um, yay for that. Although the picture that we have so far of Miss Peregrine, um, this is, uh, does not look like it would be Ava Green material. It looks kind of like um, a very old person. <laughs> but perhaps it's a misdirect. I'm all for that. So yeah, uh, so far so good. So in summation, what has been achieved uh, this weekend is I filmed, how many videos did I film? Four? Just thinking of the number of outfits I wore. I think it's four. <laughs> so four videos, I finished two books, and read a hundred pages of another one. I think that's pretty that's pretty good for one weekend that got derailed a couple of times because of watching Suicide Squad, which like I regret. And uh, then this morning's just the today not really getting off to a start. So like considering like today was just basically a complete wash, I think I did pretty good. Wouldn't you agree, baby kitty? She agrees. Just trust me. She does. <laughs> so. That does it. Let me know in the comments down below um, if you've read any of the books that I was reading during this vlog. Um, if I've intrigued you, if you're planning to pick them up now. Um, anything else I talked about in this vlog? Whatever you want to let me know. I post videos on Saturdays. Other random times as well, but not on Saturdays. So like and subscribe. Join my Patreon if you feel so inclined. And I'll see you on my next